quiet, calculated, precise. Ask anyone at Cordesco's Chess Center and they'll tell you that chess takes practice, determination, and skill. And everyone has a different reason to compete in Broome County's third annual chess tournament. There are beautiful ideas involved, visually, um, calculating ideas. Um, when I say beautiful, it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's more than fun. It's rewarding. And there's a, s a social aspect to it also. The chess people are great. And others say... When you're a kid, between now thousands, we used to play thousands and thousands of games. Used to be a chess club at the YMCA downtown. It's fun because it's a challenge. But for Noah Drum, chess is a passion that he's had since he was five years old. You have to sit down and actually take the time to learn it. And once you play your first game, then you pretty much remember the rules. Yeah. But it's kind of hard because there's different moves you can do. Noah and Dan both agree that chess is a great thing for kids to learn. It's fun, it helps you think, and it gets you out of the house. You have to have skills in playing it. It's not something you just know because it's more constructive than just watching TV or playing video games. From its believed origins in the 6th century to practically being standard on most computers now, this mathematical game isn't just for pros. You have to have patience and discipline and really think your moves ahead of time and really see the consequences of your action. I think it's very uh, a very good activity for kids. And whether you know what castling is or not. This here? Yes. And then I can right this back. Chess is a game that both young and old can excel at. And Dan's dad says that he's already doing great. Those older brothers, watch out. Here he comes. 64 squares, 32 pieces, and lots of fun. In Binghamton, Elise McAlanis, YNN. And here's the lineup for the Zurich Chess Challenge 2015. Played between February 13th and the 19th, 2015. I mean, look at this group. Vladimir Kramnik, former world champion. Getting a little bit older, but the guy is still sharper than hell. My buddy from the United States, Carl Nakamura. I believe number six now in the world. And Carl just come off a really big win and a really tough open in Gibraltar and played beautifully. Vishy Anand from India, former world champion, just lost his challenge to Magnus Carlsen last year. But they put Vishy out and he won the candidates tournament to get into the finals against Carlsen and try to get his title back. So Vishy's far from gone. Fabiano Caruana, great, great player. Had a hell of a last year and a half. He's come a long way. He's one of the top players in the world. I believe he's number two now, Italian-American. Great player. Levin Aronian from Armenia. Levin's had a tough year or so. He's had a tough time, but I'll tell you what. Don't, don't think that he's lost any of his skills because he's still a great, great player. And a good guy, too. And Sergei Karyakin, originally from Ukraine, now representing Russia. I haven't seen much of Karyakin lately, but I'll tell you, this guy was one of the top prodigies in the world, and he's still one of the best players in the world. Any one of these guys can win this. It's going to be a great tournament. Stay tuned for the games. Hi, folks. John Cordisco here. Round one of the Zurich Chess Challenge 2015 between Fabiano Caruana, Italian American as white, and my buddy from the United States, Carl Nakamura, is black. This is a hell of a game. Hell of a game. Uh, you, you won't know who's going to win to the very end. Anyway, it's going to be a Nadorf Sicilian, so let's get to it. We'll go through the opening fairly quickly here. E5. That's the one of the drawbacks. I just don't like that backward pawn. Of course, I'm anal. That's probably why I'm not even rated 1600 yet. <laughs> Knight comes over. Now, according to the computer, that's the last book move. H5. That's, I've seen that a lot of times before. When they say book move, I'm not sure if they mean main lines or whatever they mean. But anyway, it is what it is. G3. Knight comes up. Bishop G5 for Caruana. A car goes bishop e7, getting ready to castle. a4. Knight c5, good spot. That's why he blocked in that bishop temporarily. 
That's a good spot for that knight. Just coaxing him to go. B4. Bishop G2 continues development. Bishop B6. Carl brings his other bishop out. A5. Destined to stop this pawn here. B5. Pawn takes pawn and passant. Queen takes B3. Okay. It's about an even game. Maybe a minute advantage for black. Typical Sicilian stuff. Interesting, though. That bishop on G2, though. Not a big fan of it. As uh, Fisher used to say, it's biting on granite. Unfortunately, it's your own pawn this time. Castles for Carl. Carwana Castles. A5. Okay. It's a game. But to see how this goes. Queen D2. Get your rooks over. Looks like Carl wants to play on the queen side a little bit. Got both of his bishops pointing this way. His knight is over here. Queen, rooks. It's not hard to figure out. Carl's playing on the queen side. Rook, a4. Here it comes. We start the movement on the queen side. The b takes. Now, interesting enough, though, the computer likes queen a5. And a close second is rook to a6. Carl decides to go bishop to c4. The computer didn't hate that move. It just didn't like it very much. I think it's a good spot for the bishop, frankly. A lot better spot when he was in. If he had gone rook to a6 after rook to b1, queen a7, rook b4, what well, about an even game? After bishop c4, a5, queen goes back to d8. Now this... Not as good would have been rook takes to give you an idea what would have happened. Bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes, rook takes, check, queen takes. And Wade would have got two pieces for the rook. And I'd rather have two pieces for a rook all day. After queen to d8, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes. Now, of course, for those of you guys that are wondering what would have happened if the rook took the pawn again. Queen takes. Bishop. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook takes a5. You're down a piece. The queen was overloaded. After queen takes. Rook takes. Knight to b7. Hitting the rook. Rook to d2. Now. It's less than a half pawn advantage for white. Even though white's up two pawns. Those you keep in track. I think Carl sacrificed the pawn. I think eventually he's going to win the A pawn. So we're going to see. But you got to remember, both of these pawns over here are isolated. So we're going to see how this works out. Rook takes. You finally get that pawn back. He decides not to trade rooks. The knight goes to C5. Now, look at this thing. How complicated is this? we got six minor pieces and four rooks on the board. And nine pawns. And this is tough stuff. And Fabiano starts using a little bit of his time. He's not in time pressure yet. We're on move 24, but he's certainly getting there. I mean, this this is the kind of position that keeps me up at night. Or uh, if I'm going to play in a tournament in the near future. These kind of positions are what I absolutely, oh, I have, I dread. Because it's so easy to make a mistake. I like the D5 by Carl Wanow. Carl decides to go Bishop D8. And the computer likes that move. It's, there's like three right in a row here off screen that are all basically the same. Bishop d8, h4, goes to shore up that side of the board, I think. Rook a3, knight e c3. I mean, look at all this. I mean, look at this mess. Gosh. Rook a to c8, doubles up. When down, double up. Keeper would have thought maybe g5 would have been interesting. After pawn takes, bishop takes, rook, and put both rooks on the back rank. After rook c to a8, rook comes down, bishop a5, knight b5, rook a2, bishop f3, g6. 
Those are what would have happened if Carl took the pawn. Knight to e3, bishop, rook to d5, bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes. And black's down the exchange and going to lose the game. So that free pawn wasn't so free. After g6, knight to e7, check. King goes to g7, knight c6. It's still about the same. Third half upon advantage for white. We'll call it even. It's, it's still tough to figure this out. There's a lot to figure here. Knight to a4. Carl decides to bring around the knight, threatening to go here, which will give a Carl the bishop pair. Knight to d6. If you had taken knight takes e5 instead, after bishop takes... Rook takes, knight c3, and there you go. End up with a piece and two pawns for a rook. Bishop e6, now we're on move 33, and Carwan is getting pretty low on time now. He's probably got 10, 11 minutes left, if I recall. Rook to b7 for Carwana. Bishop c3, or rook takes. C2 is what the computer likes. Carl decided to take the pawn. Now we're at even material now. Carl has the bishop pair, but we're even in material. Knight takes. Now look at that. Look at that. This has been his whole point for a while here. Put pressure on that F7 pawn. And what's Carl going to do? Knight to C5. Rook to e7. Computer didn't like that at all. Even though it is the computer's choice, one of the top choices. Now it's slowly going down. I think I think Caruana was so set on that f7 pawn to get him a counterplay that he was basic his whole game on this. King to f8. Knight c6. Computer didn't like that at all. Rook takes. He wanted to sacrifice the exchange. Knight takes. Knight takes was the computer's choice. After knight to c6, Carl goes knight to b3. And we're on move 37. And Caruana is desperately low on time to figure out this complicated position. What to do? What to do? Dear Caruana, what do you do here? Rook takes c6. You sacrifice the exchange. Or you go e5. e5 seems like a very natural move. Very natural move. Helping that knight out on d6. That's in a really good spot. Bishop b6. But the only thing he can do is try to get some counterplay. Now we're going after this pawn here. Now white's about ready to make his, his 39th move. He's got extreme time pressure. I think there was a couple of minutes left. I'm not sure. Rook takes e6. The computer likes. In fact, that's the only move. This, the second move on the computer for, for white is an overwhelming advantage for black. Has to take the bishop on e6. And he makes a, a bad move in time pressure. Rook to b7. Now the computer has it at almost a three-point advantage for black. Caruana Buckle under the pressure. Computer like rook takes, and after f takes, knight to d4, bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, check, king, bishop, king h3, bishop takes, bishop g2. Black's up a pawn, and it's almost a point advantage. And I think Caruana didn't want to do that. He didn't want to get one of those three-on-two deals with, you're going to play it out. We're on, that's, this is move 44 in the example here, and I don't think he wanted to go through that. So he decided to go rook to b7, hitting the bishop. Big mistake. F takes check. King to g2. Bishop c5 for Carl. 
King moves because it's a discovered check. And Rook A to A2. And that's it. Fabiano Caruana, Italian American. I believe he's number three in the world now, or resigns. Great game by Acaro. You know, and, and you're going to get a lot of time you hear, well, you know, if the guy didn't screw up, uh, he wouldn't have won. Well, that's what all sport is. When the pressure's on to perform, when it's in American baseball, it's the bottom of the ninth inning, and it's three strikes and two balls, and you get a base hit, you hit in the winning run. That's what this is about. When it's the time to, and the pressure is being applied, how strong you are to come up with it. And, a car, and uh, not, a Fabiano Caruana couldn't come up with it. Uh, does that take away from anybody's win? Of course not. And I remember last year in Zurich when Nakamura had Carlson dead to rights. Great game. Great game. I've never seen Carlson pushed against the wall so badly and messed up. So these things happen. It's not the winner. It, it isn't less of a win because somebody screwed up. That's the way it goes. Give you an idea what would happen after that. After Bishop, I mean, what else can he do? He's going to get mated. Rook takes. Now he's up a piece. Knight d4. Knight takes. Rook checks. This will give you the sequence of what will happen after this. King takes. I mean, you know, it's, it's over. <laughs> I'm not going to even continue. Anyway, that's a hell of a win for Carl. Real proud of him. He hung in there. It was He was basically not behind, but Wade had a small advantage through the whole game. And Carl played on, and he played on, and he played on. So, after round one, Carl Nakamura with a win against Fabiano Caruana. I want to thank all my new subscribers. I've got quite a few in the last couple of months. Thank you very, very much. And also, I've received a lot of views, especially from my Tata Steel uh, views. I'm working on a deal with Chess24 to be able to show some of the post-mortem games. I got an email or a message from Macaulay Peterson, and he's a good guy. We're going to work out something, I hope, so we'll be able to show the post-mortems from the players, because Chess24 owns the copyright. But anyway, folks, great game by Carl. And as I always say... If you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.